he's delved into the, of course he eats milk products here at, from our Himza dairy, but uh, he really delved into the possibilities, the miracle of milk, if you will, with regard to so many preparations. And he's uh, still working on all of that. So that's exciting. But we had a nice day. Um, so are you connected now? Okay, so today, then in other places, in regions relative to this broadcast, it seems that it is the Nityananda Triodasi, Nityananda Triodasi, Maha Kijai. So, um, uh, I wanna, well, I wanna focus on a particular uh, sense of the appearance of Nityananda Prabhu that uh, is different from his, his birth, if you will, which we are commemorating today. I'll get to that. But um, briefly about his birth or appearance, as we sometimes refer to it in the world, as many of you know, he appeared in Ek Chakra, which is in the, the Raj Mandal or the, the Gota Mandala, the circle that um, um, constitutes the sacred geographical area corresponding with uh, that same geographical area of Vrindavan appearing uh, on earth. Um, that's an interesting subject in itself. Uh, while there are considerable uh, correspondence, so this measures of correspondence that we can draw upon to make the case that, that the Gota Mandala is the Braj Mandala on earth, there are some significant uh, differences in terms of where things are located and how people fit in. And so the differences, the disparity, if you will, um, of course, we think of as being relative to the kind of confusing, transcendentally confusing nature of Gorlil itself. What, what I'm saying is that, well, in Braj Mandal, Govardhan is here, Jamuna is here, Vrindavan Forest is here. You go to Nav go to Mandal and Govardhan's way over here, Radhakun's over here, it's a little confusing. Or we have relative to Nityananda Prabhu's appearance, we have Nityananda Prabhu appearing in Ek Chakra and Sankarshan, his expansion in the Mathura and Dwarka pastimes is appearing in Navadweep hmm? as Vifarup, the older brother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So things are old. Um, as much as there's a lot of correspondence, there's some disparity uh, as well. And that disparity, of course, is due to, as I say, the bewildering, transcendently bewildering nature of Navadweep that causes the landing, if you will, to uh, causes things to fall a little bit out of place in the ecstasy of what the Leela really uh, constitutes. It's very, of course, extraordinary affair in which Krishna finds himself in another Leela and he's not sure half the time if, if he's himself or who he is and ultimately he steps into the bhava of, of Radha, his associates, of course, at a certain point, do can come to the conclusion or have the epiphany that perhaps he's Krishna himself. Who could give love so of Prem of Krishna? It, it couldn't be an avatar of Krishna because no other avatar of Krishna has access or interest to or access or interest in Prema Madhurya, Lila Madhurya, the Venu Madhurya, the Rupa Madhurya of, of Krishna. These are his qualities. Hmm? No other avatar has interest in such, this person does, and he's giving it so freely. So Rupa Goswami's famous verse, of course, Namo Mahabhadunaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurati Se Namah. Here he describes the qualities, the, 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 the uh, his Leela, Krishna Prema Pradayate, to give Krishna Prema his name, so his, his, his form, in his form, hmm? uh, Golden form, his name is Krishna Chaitanya, his name, form, qualities, and 
Leela. <clears throat> and so, as I said, with that epiphany that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Krishna, then the very astute, theologically astute uh, associates of his began to wonder, well, wait a minute here, if he's Krishna, Krishna's never alone. He has his associates too. Hmm? He's not without them. He's not Krishna without them. Hmm? They are the, uh, the love that corresponds with him as the object of love, and you can't have one without the other. Hmm? And of course, then they realize it's us. We are those associates. Could it be? So it's a rather confusing, transcendentally confusing affair. Nabhadweep, hmm? the Gauru Mandala, is sometimes described as um, uh, Sadaka Siddha Bhumi, that land, Bhumi, where Sadakas, Siddhas, are playing the role of Sadakas. And as is the case in all the Leelas, they are pretty absorbed in the drama. Hmm? Uh, so, at any rate, Chaitanya Nityananda Prabhu appearing in Ek Chakra as the son of Hadai Pandit and Padmavati. And he appeared uh, approximately 12 years before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And just about at the time, 1486, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance, Nityananda Prabhu left home. Hmm? Of course, he left home traveling with the sannyasi to, to holy places of pilgrimage. And during the entire period that he traveled, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, uh, fam became famous as Nimai Pandit and was yet to manifest himself as the Vaishnava and begin his uh, Leela of the dissemination of uh, Krishna consciousness and the pers internal pursuit of it in terms of its apex in Radha Bhava. So Nityananda Prabhu was traveling Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is growing up, and when the time comes, as we'll see here, we go forward for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to manifest his um, Leela as a Vaishnava, uh, retiring, putting Gyan in its place in relation to Bhakti, hmm, um, so to speak, then Nityananda Prabhu appears on the scene. But during his travels, um, it's a significant event is said to have occurred according to Bhakti Ratnakar, which is uh, probably the first the early, mm, uh, most, and at least if not the first, uh, the most comprehensive historical uh, retelling of Gaur Leela and, and the lives, incidents surrounding his associates, um, all from the subjective devotional perspective of the of the author not Hari, um, but therein um, it's mentioned that during his travels at uh, Pandurapur, which is in Maharashtra, this is a place that's sometimes called the like uh, the new Kasi or something like that. So it has some relation with Kasi, famous place for dying for the Hindus mm, along the bank of the, the Ganga. Um, but in Maharashtra, there, there's a famous, the, the central temple is, is a Vital, a temple of Krishna. Krishna standing without, without Radha. But um, there, Nityananda Prabhu uh, arrived in his travels at the same time that Lakshmi Patitirtha arrived there. Lakshmi Patitirtha is thought to be the... Uh, in our Sampradaya, the initiating guru of Madhavendra Puri, who of course was the guru of Advaita Charya, the parents of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and of Ishwar Puri, who became the Diksha Guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it's said there in Bhakti Ratnakar that, uh, that Lakshmi Pati Tirtha was invited to, was hosted by a Brahmin family, and arriving in the town, in the house, he felt a very powerful spiritual uh, presence that he that he was uh, stunned by and retired to his quarters, went into meditation through kirtan, through kirtan of Balaram Nam, hmm, chanting the name and the about the attributes and the leelas of Balaram, which seemed to be his preoccupation, um, transcendental preoccupation. He went into a trance, 
so 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 kirtan um, as bhakti siddhanta sarasvati thakur used to say kirtana prabhave smarana swabhave if you want to want to enter deeply into smarana and understand a swabhav another nature the prospect of another nature that has come to us through the ingress of bhakti into the, our lives as sasta if we have the capacity to 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 absorb the ingress of of the Swarup Shakti and not only be, as it's thought, in other prominent forms of Vedanta, like Advaita Vedanta, that you be, but you can also become transcendentally. That's a very extraordinary idea. An eternal becoming, as it's said about praying, it's full, but ever increasing at the same time. So uh, that's that type of internal absorption is most effectively uh, arrived at through the power of kirtan. Kirtana prabhave, by the power of kirtan, smarana sobhave. So here's an example of Lakshman Patitita as described in Bhakti Ratnakar. Through, na, through kirtan, uh, 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 concerning with the focus on Baladev, he entered into trance. And in the trance, Balaram appeared to him. <clears throat> and told him that an, that an, that an abudut, a person outside of the uh, traditional uh, norms in terms of uh, behavior and um, appearance, um, appearing perhaps a little mad, but in reality, the madness has a method and it, it is a result of a very extraordinary level of transcendental um, attainment. This such an abudut would appear and ask him for initiation. Hmm? So that was very extraordinary experience for Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, and of course thereafter, shortly thereafter, Nityananda Prabhu entered the house and asked for for diksha. Also in the in the trance, I should mention that Balaram um, extended or imparted a mantra, a Diksha mantra to uh, Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, which upon Nityananda Prabhu's request for initiation, the Tirtha imparted the mantra to Nityananda Prabhu. So this is an, another interesting instance that has a kind of a correspondence with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sanyas initiation, where he uh, imparted the mantra to Keshava Bharati and then heard it back from Keshava Bharati. So here, Nityananda Prabhu in the form of Balaram in, with the an, in darshan, antar darshan, internal darshan of Balaram on the part of Lakshmi Pati Tirtha. He received the mantra that he would then impart to Nityananda Prabhu. Um, and as such or through such accept him as his disciple. Um, and shortly thereafter, of course, uh, Balaram is said to have appeared to him in a dream and further and showed himself to be non different from Nityananda Prabhu. Lakshmi Pati Tirtha Ki Jai. Nityananda Prabhu Ki Jai. It's also related to this, we find um, that it's, un, it's, it's, it's fairly common for uh, the uh, authors uh, uh, of our sacred texts concerning Gorlita to refer to Nityananda Prabhu as Nityananda Swarup. Hmm? We find this reference uh, repeatedly, for example, in Chaitanya Bhagavat. And um, the author, of course, Chaitanya Bhagavat is, is his Ishtadevata is Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu said, is the Antaryami, the Lord of my heart. He told me within to write this book and so forth. We have, we have, it's an, it's an example of how we know about Gorlila through Nityananda Prabhu, who, who empowered Vrindavan Das to write about him. But um, the relative to the to the to the discussion we're having at the moment, the, the title Swarup, of course, is a brahmachari name, technically speaking, in the sannyas order from the Tirtha sector. So there are different sannyas orders like Ashram, Tirtha, Saraswati, Puri, Ashram and so forth. Both ashram and tirtha schools of sannyas, um, they, uh, the brahmacharis in those schools are, are named swarup. So 
the reference that Dinana Sarup is an apparent reference to the fact that, again, Dinana Prabhu was the initiating disciple of Lakshman Pati Tirtha, who, after initiating um, Nityananda Prabhu, shortly thereafter, is said to have departed from the world. He, rep, he worshipped Balaram, as, as the story I'm telling clearly uh, points out, and, um, and his disciple, it is in his disciple, Madhavendra Puri, uh, that we find in the beginning of the worship of Krishna in, along with Radha, so to speak, in a formal sampradaya mm -hmm. and that systematically uh, gives access to uh, uh, the divine couple. Um, so, as we know, the Dhananda Prabhu Balaram is not directly involved in the Madhuri Leela. Hmm? Makes sense. He's initiated by Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, but he's indirectly involved, and we want to get into that because his indirect involvement is significant. Whatever he does is, is significant. And particularly so, um, Balaram's indirect participation in Madhuri Leela is particularly so or extraordinary or uh, impactful in terms of his um, appearance in Gorlila as Nitananda Prabhu. So we'll, we'll, we'll come to this, but um, um, as it is said, it's, it's explained as Nitananda Prabhu traveled, of course, visiting the different holy places, um, this corresponded with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who's gradually, gradually beginning to manifest himself as a Vaishnava. He was loved by everyone in, in Nadia. He was the joy of everyone except the Vaishnavas. They didn't like him. <laughs> they loved him, but they didn't like that he was so absorbed just in, in, in sophistry or in, 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 in Gyan, hmm? endlessly parsing words and grammar to find new meanings and so on and so forth when the real meaning real knowledge is bhakti itself hmm? to know to know to love to know one to know no no one is to love love it's an old song to love one <laughs> to love one is to know one i should say yeah so uh, this is the this is the siddhanta of, of gaudi vaishnavism and uh, uh so they were uh, um, not happy with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they, but they thought, oh, if only he would become a Vaishnava, what would our position be then with him in our, our fold, in our ranks? Uh, the story, uh, one of the most compelling stories in this regard, as an aside, of course, is the, is the exchange between Murari Gupta and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, where Mahaprabhu is challenging him to debate and Murari doesn't really want to participate. And Mahaprabhu reaches out and touches him and electrifies him with a, a charge of ecstasy and Murari knows this person who, who is, uh, is extraordinary, becomes filled with praying for him. Hmm? So this is happening. Actually, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I will become a great Vaishnava. I will become the best Vaishnava. Oh, he's, we love him, but he's so proud. Hmm? <laughs> and so this is happening as Nityananda Prabhu is traveling, and as Nityananda Prabhu is traveling, and the um, fact that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is God, and he is, for that matter, Bhagavan, he is Swayam Bhagavan, and all the forms of the Godhead are present in him. Hmm? The more Chaitanya Mahaprabhu starts to move towards his Vaishnav, uh, Leela, the more his godhood starts to manifest, and the less in the vision of Nityananda Prabhu, the godhood was present in the other holy places and in the deities that he visited. Hmm? <laughs> so, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was gradually drawing uh, the manifestations of the godhead from other places all into himself for an impactful. Um, uh, beginning, if you will, of his Vaishnav Leela. 
So this is happening for 12, 13 years that Nityananda Prabhu is, is, is traveling. And then, of course, it comes time for him to make his appearance in Navadweep that coincides with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, taking initiation. Um, uh, I believe it was in 1508, yes, on the eve of Guru Purnima, which would be in July, July 1508, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just earlier, I believe maybe in Magh, Mas, the month of Magh, perhaps he was initiated by Ishwar Puri. So he's just begun to manifest his Vaishnava Leela, which would be terribly, terribly incomplete without the presence of Nityananda Prabhu, although all the other associates are more or less assembled. Hmm? Something is, 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 is missing, and it's uh, Father Ram, Nityananda, Nityananda Ram's presence. So he appears on the eve of um, Guru Purnim and just um, uh, on that day or just prior to that day, Nityananda, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had a dream. Hmm? I think it related in Chaitanya Bhagavat. And in the dream, a great personality came knocking at his door and very loudly dressed in, in blue vestments and a turban and, uh, and swaying back and forth, chanting Krishna Nam and, uh, and had arrived on a chariot hmm, with the flag bearing the fan-like shape of the tal palm. The tal palm is a very, uh, excuse me, very auspicious uh, palm tree, uh, famous in Krishna Leela, and famous in relation to Baladev. It, uh, it uh, is connected with the Dena Kasura, the slaying of Dena Kasura, which is a very, uh, the most central uh, Leela to the Sakiras center of the Bhagavatam. It uh, takes place at the beginning, early part of his Poganda Leela, Krishna's, Krishna Balaram's Poganda Leela, which is their boyhood, which is central, uh, to, uh, to Sakyarasa. And uh, of course, at, during that Poganda Leela is the time when Balaram's uh, prominence begins to manifest. Hmm? It doesn't manifest in his Kumara Leela, his prominence manifests in his in the Poganda Leela, and it recedes a little of the background in, his, in Krishna's Kishore Leela. Hmm? So, uh, you know, all of you are familiar with the, with the Dena Kasura Leela. And, and of course, this is a very beautiful uh, um, Leela in which the coward boys uh, get the best of Balaram, so to speak, challenging him. You're the older brother. Hmm? We've been able to come out here cow herding hmm? because you stepped in and said, to Mother Yasoda that you would protect hmm, Krishna. And she had to accept Balaram's words, the, the Daoji, the older brother, as, as synonymous with that of the father, hmm, the older brother, the guru. Hmm. And of course, Nandaraj came in and confirmed, yes, he, he, can, he can go now. Huh? He can herd cows. But, but the, 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 the cowards question that all these things are said about you. You so that's fostered upon you this sense that you're this powerful older brother that can protect Krishna, but you've never shown it. What have you done? Agasur, Bhakasur, Putana, all these have come and Krishna has dealt with all of them. Well, what's your position? You can imagine how this pinched a, a nerve of Balaram. Ram, Ram, Mahabaho, you have big long arms, but what are you doing with them? What have you done? What have you shown us? And meanwhile, the redolence, the scent of these tal fruits, the tal tree is, a, is considered a, in, in, in the South Indian culture, it's considered a, a, a kalpa riksha. Hmm? Um, and 
one of the reasons for that is because every part of the Tao Palm can be used for the benefit of human uh, society from its fruit, its leaves, its trunk, to its roots, and so forth. So it's kind of living, if you will, for giving itself to, to, to humans who will use it in the context of what human life is meant for the pursuit of God consciousness. So very auspicious tree and a very succulent uh, palm fruit. And um, they could smell the scent. Hmm. This is a story that appears on its surface, the, the, the slaying of Denikasur as a deforestation Leela, not very auspicious, but it's actually a reforestation Leela because Denikasur and his associates were not allowing the trees that were mature to be taken advantage of by the humans as they are intended to. Hmm? And humans, of course, are meant to be the stewards of the environment, which re requires sometimes reforestation, reforestation, sometimes sensibly um, retiring some trees and using them in human society in such a way that the forest will be uh, benefited and able to flourish that much more. It can become overgrown, just like you have to give yourself a haircut sometimes. Hmm? So sometimes, thoughtfully, some trees have to be taken down or and, and you can build something with them or, you know, take advantage of other um, ways in which those trees can benefit human society. And that again, human society means the society in pursuit of God consciousness. So the trees were not being allowed, uh, what to speak of the fruits to be uh, taken advantage of for human society. And it was, the forest was overgrown with these tall fruits. And um, so Balaram is, uh, slays Genekasur and, and several of the trees of course are taken down as there's one asura after another hurled by the heels into the into the leaves and upper part of the palm tree and falling and so forth. But again, it's a reforestation Leela, not a deforestation Leela. And this palm then has is the is the is the symbol on the flag of the chariot of Balaram. Hmm. The tall the palm the, the tall palm is also associated with the Nagas who who are closely associated with Balaram, his expansion of, not, of as a Nanta being an, a Naga. The girls that he ultimately married at the behest of Krishna, Nanda and Radha, hmm? uh, after returning to Braj to deliver a message on behalf of Krishna, they're also associated with the Naga lineage, which is kind of an underworld lineage that's talked about in many, many, many uh, agrarian based uh, cultures and societies are, are around the world. Some people reason that UFOs are coming from the underworld. It's a far out story, but it makes more sense than them coming from some other galaxy in, from, from outer space, which would, which would be much more difficult <laughs> um, to do. So uh, at any rate, uh, Malram's associated with this, 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 this underworld and, and the Nagas and the tall, so the tall tree is uh, like, it spreads like a, like a fan. Hmm? And so this is the symbol on his flag. And he appeared like this in a dream at the house of Nimai Pandit hmm? on a chariot with the flag and making a ruckus and uh, insisting that he, he be allowed in and so forth. So awakening from the dream, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told his associates that he had included that a great personality had appeared in Navadweep, we should seek him out. He sent um, his so close associates to find him. They couldn't find him. They couldn't find him perhaps because he didn't appear externally as a great uh, person, didn't bring attention to himself. Um, he uh, was unorthodox in his behavior and his appearance, as I mentioned, an Abadut. Um, but uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then took his associate and said, I, he said, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll find him. I'll take you to him. And so again, this was on the, uh, the uh, would have been on the, the, uh, the eve of, Gaur, of, Guru, of Guru Purnim in uh, 1508. And it's, it's noteworthy to us that in only seven months later, in January of 1509, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas 
and left Nadia, Nittai going with him. Hmm? Of course, Nittai was sent back and he would go back annually. And at a certain point, he was asked to stay there and not return to Puri, asked by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the sake of the dissemination of the Prema Dharma in, in Nadia. But the important point I'm raising here is that there's only seven months that Gaur and Nityananda were together in the Sankirtan Leela in Navadweep. So this is the this is significant to us because the Prakat Leela is like a trailer in relation to the movie of the Aprakat Leela. So some features of the Aprakat Leela are manifest in the Prakat Leela as a, to give us some idea of, of what it's like. Hmm? And so this is a, a particular window from the Aprakat Leela of Gaur Leela where Gaur and Nityananda are together and not, we, we want to go into that section of the Prakat Leela hmm, and enter into the Aprakat Gaur Leela hmm, where Gaur and Nityananda are both present. Hmm. We don't want to go to the Aprakat, the Prakat Leela, take birth in the Prakat Leela of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when Nityananda Prabhu is not there. Hmm. So, so to focus on this section, which will, which will correspond with our experience of, of the eternal Aprakat Gaur Leela, where Gaur and Nityananda are always present together in Sankirtan, is the point, is, uh, is useful to us. Hmm. It's a seventh month um, period, Prakash, a window into a section of the trailer, if you will. Hmm. We have to, of course, as I often say, we, you know, we have to know where we're going and we have to know where we are. If you go to the mall looking for room 108, you look on the map, it says it's up here and it also says, and you are here. So we have to know both in order from, to go from here where we are to go there. So we want to go there and in this section and this time and how to go there, of course, that is the, that method is taught by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on taking sannyas. Hmm? That is his Madhi Leela. Hmm? His Madhi Leela is not much of a teaching Leela. What can you teach about that? He's mad. Hmm? Teaching is that through what he does in the Madhi Leela, you can enter, if you do, you can enter into the madness that is the Anti Leela, which will then give you access To the you can all hear. Me. So, um, we're going to focus on this section. We want to focus on, and the, it's the appearance of Nityananda, but I want to focus, excuse me for the long preface, on the appearance of Nityananda in Navadweep rather than his, his birth. Hmm? and revealed as it was, his, who he was, by um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went out of his way on this occasion and further on other occasions to point out the significance of Nityananda Prabhu, the divinity of Nityananda Prabhu, which could be in question because of his unorthodox behavior. Same holds true with Balaram, as you know, I refer, what well, we referred earlier to the Dana Kasura Leela, that Leela begins with the mention of Gopastami, the Poganda Leela beginning, and Krishna in the forest with the eulogy glorifying Balaram. Hmm? So even the Bhagavatam goes out of its way to point out through the word, through the mouth of Krishna, who is Balaram? Don't think he's just one of the other coward boys, which would be extraordinary in itself, but, but he, is, he is the Godhead himself. He is the birth of fraternal love. You can just imagine hmm, if you, as an emotional being, having an experiencing a particular emotion, could manifest it as a person and then interact with that emotion. Hmm? This is Krishna Leela. So the, when the when the upsurge of uh, emotion of for fraternal love appears, this corresponds with the appearance of Baladev. It personifies. It's not think something that happens in time, obviously. But it personifies, and then it interacts with that emotion. Hmm? This is an incredible concept. Hmm? And of course, what that means is that the Leela, even though ba Bhagav this is Bhagavan's Leela and he's omniscient, it still has surprise to it. 
because we're taken by surprise by our own emotions, what they will do to us, where they will take us, what will be the result. Hmm? Such, a, such a dynamic notion of uh, transcendence, it should be such. I mean, our material life is full of ups and downs, twists and turns and excitements that make it worth living. Hmm? To bring that all to an end in the name of peace alone would leave us without the excitement of love. Hmm? So we want peace and love, both. <laughs> so, so that is the idea of, of bhakti. We don't want to exist, love to exist, but exist to love. Hmm? Something more. Hmm? So on this occasion, uh, as well, in Gorla, we find Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally introducing the devotees to Nityananda Prabhu and um, underscoring his spiritual significance that might be lost on some who have a formal notion of what it means to be a saint. You have to act like this, you have to sit like this, they have to walk like this, so on and so forth. There, there's some substance to that until you get there. <laughs> and rules, are, rules are made to be broken. That's the, that's the purpose. If you can, there's a way to break them that, that, that they're meant to be broken through. The moral life is, is more or less a caged life. Hmm? We come from the, the animality, the humanity, and we try to, we put the humans in a cage. They should act like this, not like the animals in this way, in that way. There are ways in which we do not like to want to act like animals. We want to be polite. We want to say thank you. We want to say you first and so forth, but only for the purpose of, of, of experiencing the thing that's attractive to us about animal life, the wildness. <laughs> they, they just, they, and then the knowing that they have, the knowing that they have that we don't have I recently came back from, from my room in, 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 in Palo Alto with Rin Rin and Uranista, and they have a little pooch named Singha who's a temple temple dog, you know, from the, the what, what, what do they call those, what type of dog is that? In the Buddhist circles, they're temple, little temple dogs. Anyway, as we, as we got close into Audaria, Singa, he, he, he was Shih aware, you know, we were like a couple miles away. He, he knew we were there. And I just thought that kind of knowing, hmm? this, is, this is desirable, <laughs> right? For humans, the kind of knowing that is so different than the way in which we know, which we think is superior. Hmm? In some ways it may appear to be, in some ways it may get in the way of a more feelingful, knowing, if you will. I mean, if, if I as a human was were blindfolded at driving somewhere and I said, oh, I'm here, people would think it was miraculous. Hmm? But dogs do it without a second thought, right? Animals, so there's a, there's a, there's a kind of knowing in their wildness and, and, and their attunement to nature and so forth that we as humans have become distanced from by intellect. By intellect, we become distanced from the nature of nature that we are part of. Hmm? And, and then the overuse of this intellect when it's not tied to revelation, hmm? when it becomes philosophy rather than theology, just a machinations of the, of the, of the, of the intellect uh, as Prabhupada just to call it, kind of call it kind of a masturbation. It doesn't result in anything. Hmm? It doesn't give a product. Uh, whereas when, 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 when intellect is tied to, to revelation, explaining the, 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 the implications of, of, of these sounds these that have appeared in the hearts of the sadhus, the rishis, hmm, that, are, that are speak about the, how the world comes into being, how it transcends. Sound, of course, is said how Brahma creates the world because sound categorizes things. This is that, this is that, that is this. This is what Brahma is doing hmm, through sound. Just like there are sounds, or there are, there are, I should say, there are mathematical equations. I gave this example before. There are mathematical equations that are discovered that tell us something about how nature works. So there are sounds hmm, by which we can transcend the, the limits 
of the of the mind and um, and body of that which meets the eye and and, and, and mind. Mm -hmm. um, so um, when we get there, so. Uh, <laughs> um, So um, I need someone to, re to remind me. Uh, uh, gone off on Yes. So he was an abadut. Hmm? He was beyond the rules. In human society, we, we, we try to cage the humans, give them moral codes, how they should, should be that is different from animals, which, are, which allows them to say, please, thank you, you first, uh, prim and proper, polite, and so forth. But that life in itself is not gonna satisfy us. Hmm? Hmm? There's something about, what, about the wildness of nature that we also relate to, so how to enter into that, that, I'm just giving this an example. We have to break, at a certain point, we can break out of the cage and be wild and it's all right. Hmm? I mean, Krishna Leela is telling us this. Krishna is an adulterer, <laughs> it would appear. <laughs> Gopis are adulteresses. How can it be? Hmm? This is the idea. So there's something, more. so he was living beyond the rules in a healthy way, but it's not understood by those who think only the rules the Amagraha are the sum and substance of what spirituality is about. Now, of course, this, this is misrepresented by some people. That, that, that's unfortunate. But when you can swim with alligators like Nityananda Prabhu, uh, then, <laughs> then you can do things that other people can't do uh, as well. Um, therefore, it said, if you see him in a brothel with a with a with a with a with a, with a prostitute, you should think he's only there for the purpose of converting her. Hmm? But as he appeared on the steps of Nandanacharya on his porch, where Mahaprabhu found him, along accompanied by Mahaprabhu accompanied by his associates, then there's a beautiful uh, 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 section of verses in Chaitanya Bhagavat that described the appearance of Nityananda Prabhu as he appeared at that time. And I've, I, in my book, the forthcoming book, I've, I've rendered this section poetically, and I'd like to read it to you. It's a description of the appearance of Nityananda Prabhu in Navadvipa. Now we're getting to the, the heart of our discussion today. I'll read it a little slowly so that the translators in Europe and in Latin America can um, do their best <laughs> with it. Dressed as a great avadut, large in stature, boundless was the depth of his gravity. Day and night he chanted Krishna Nam. He was Chaitanya Dham itself, incomparable within the world of realms, Bur, Buha, Swa. Roaring loudly in his own Ananda, he appeared intoxicated as if Balaram Avatar, his heartwarming countenance conquered millions of moons. The enchanting smile on his lips was the life of the universe. His teeth shone like pearls while his reddish eyes beautified his face. His two hands reached his knees, his chest raised high, his pair of soft lotus feet were tender, yet deft at dancing. He spoke to all with great compassion. On hearing the words from his lotus mouth, one's karma was destroyed. Sri Vrindavandastakur Mahashai Ki Jai to this vision of Krishnadas, because he's a disciple of the Tananda Prabhu, was uh, the experience of the associates of 
of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What to make of it, of course, was on their mind. He looks like Balaram. How could that, you know, who could that be? Um, these kind of thoughts were apparently running through the heads of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates. And, Chet, and, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu turned, of course, to whom? He turned to Srivas Pandit. He was a Pandit, Srivas. Srivas Thakur. He turned to Srivas Pandit and he said, chant a verse from the Bhagavad. Hmm? This is, I say this is, a, this is not the only occasion that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would turn to Srivas Pandit and say, chant a verse from the Bhagavad. You should study and see the verses that he chanted hmm, repeatedly. They're very significant. Um, one previous to this, or after this, that's significant, of course, is when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared as Nishringadev at his door while he was doing the puja behind a closed door and said, let me in, I'm here. He who you're worshiping, because he worshiped the, the Nishringa uh, deity in his home, hmm, which is appropriate from the point of view of the Brajalila, because who is Srivas Pandit? Srivas Pandit Ji, Kijai. He is said to be Narada Muni. Who is Narada Muni? Narada Muni is a partial manifestation of the Braj, farcical Brahman Madhu Mangal, Anarmasaka. Hmm? And in the house of Nanda Maharaj, there's a deity of Nishingadev. And who's the Pujari? That is Madhu Mangal, the Brahman who lives there. He's the, an adopted son, so to speak, passed on from Purnamasi to Krishna and Yasoda. He lives in the same house. He has, in the Nitya Lila, he has some Brahman associates who assist him also. Hmm? So there is Shiva's worshiping Shiva, the, 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 the Nishringa Shila and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to the door, manifesting the form of Nishringa, says, let me in. He, he who you're worshiping is standing at your door and can't get inside. Broke the meditation of Shiva Stakur. He opened the door and Mahaprabhu said, chant a verse. And so he chanted a verse, a beautiful verse of Brahma describing Krishna in his cowherd appearance hmm? that Brahma saw in the Brahma Vimohan Leela. He's saying, this Nishringa and this Krishna, they're one and the same. Hmm? That's a whole other beautiful uh, explanation. Hmm? Prahlad was a devotee of Krishna, repeatedly stated in the Bhagavatam. Hmm? And Krishna appeared to him as Nishringa relative to the circumstances. So here on this occasion, Another instance, and Sri Pandit is asked by Mahaprabhu, chant a verse from the Bhagavatam. So we'll see what a significant verse he cited. He cites Sukadev's verse from the 20, I think uh, the 21st or the 22nd chapter, Venu Gita hmm? of Srimad Bhagavatam, the fifth verse. Varapidam Naravata Bapu Karnio Karnikaram. Most of you may know the verse. Let's go through it. Hmm. See what a pundit Shivas is, how it relates to the circumstance here. If Dinanda Prabhu is appearing in Gaur Leela, what will be his role? Hmm. So, first he says, What? Barapit hum nata bara bapu. He describes that, uh, that he is. It's very beautiful because uh, here she must pundit. Uh, begins his ver begins with a ver uh, th this, the verse he cites begins with arguably an emphasis on the tattva of Krishna as Swayam Bhagavan. This tattva, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam, is very central to the Gaudiya um, Sampradaya. And uh, as we discussed on Advaita Saptami recently, some last week or so, um, um, along with the, the, the line, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam in the third chapter of the first canto, we find in the 14th chapter of the 10th canto in Brahma's prayers, a similar explanation of Krishna as the source of Narayan. And this is the Pariba Sutra, the, key, the password to unlocking the philosophy of the Bhagavatam. If you get this in place, then you can understand the statements of the Bhagavatam in context, which the conclusion of which philosophically is Krishna is the fountainhead of all forms of divinity. 
he is, from an aesthetic point of view, there is more opportunity for loving hmm, in connection with Krishna than with any other um, expression of divinity. And to love him is to know him. So to know him conclusively is to know him as a source, the fountainhead of all forms of divinity. So with the words, um, what does he say? He says, um, Nato Vara Vapu. Hmm? Vapu means uh, form. So he, he appear, uh, uh, he, uh, Sukadeva says, the form of a Vara, the best Nato, the best actor, the best dancer. Nato means dance and it means drama. And if you watch any Indian films out of Hollywood, everyone's always dancing. They're all musicals. Musicals used to be a genre of, of uh, in, in, the, in, in the film industry that was more popular in the West than it is nowadays, but it's still very popular in Bollywood. Uh, and so <laughs> uh, things get ecstatic uh, and all of a sudden it turns to music and dance. So not tough. Hmm? He is the best dancer. That's true. He is the best dancer with a caveat in the school of dancing hmm? in who in which the instructor is Sri Radhika herself. Hmm? Krishna says, Ami Shishya Guru Nata. I'm, I am the Shisha and my guru in Nata in dancing is Radha, whose prem, prem era unmad, drives me crazy. It makes me dance. Her prem makes me dance. The Swarup Shakti is most fully manifest in the person of Radha. And the more the Swarup Shakti is present in relation to any manifestation of Bhagavan, the more he's moving. Hmm? And in Krishna Leela, the God, it is, is practically always dancing. Dancing is the highlight. Hmm? That is the culmination of his Leela, his deftness in dancing, which we find, of course, in the Rasa Leela. Now here at this point in the Bhagavatam where this verse appears, Krishna has not yet become a, shown himself to be a great dancer, you might think, because the Rasa Leela hasn't occurred. How can they refer to him as Natavara Bhapu, best dancer? Oh, because by the grace of Baladev, hmm? the gopis were brought to the lake of Kaliya, where Krishna was wrapped in the coils of, why did he stay in the, if he was competent as he is to defeat Kaliya very easily, why did he remain wrapped in the coils of Lila for so time, such a long time at the despair and the fainting of his friends and, cow, and their cows? Hmm? They were, they, the, the Sakiras had to bear the suffering of this, if you will, in, ex, in transcendental ecstasy, for the sake of the others, and particularly for the sake of the gopis who would be brought by Balaram after the nature, hmm? the intelligence behind nature, the devas sent messages microcosmically and macrocosmically, macrocosmically through small meteors falling and sounds and, and so forth, and microcosmically through the trembling in the bodies of the males and the females, something, something inauspicious has happened and they turned to Balaram, whose uh, micro birthday, you could call it, the day in which the moon of, of his birth appeared monthly, was being celebrated. And so he was not there during the chastising of Kaliya. So they all turned to Balaram. Something's happened to Krishna. He's gone without you. He's gone to that lake where Kaliya is famous for being there for a long time. And Yastoda has told him, Day, don't go to the lake, don't go to the lake, don't go to the lake. Of course, he went to the lake. Hmm? So Balaram then took him, took them all. And particularly, of course, from a Madhurya Rasa perspective, the whole Leela is about bringing the gopis there, young Kumaris they were at that time. Hmm? While, so that Krishna could release himself in their presence from the coil of Kaliya and dance, a, a dance that in the text of the Bhagavatam is compared to the Rasa dance itself that, that Lakshmi desired to participate in. Hmm? This tells us an interesting thing about the Kali Lila, of course, that Krishna, the, 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 the Vishnu and Krishna is said to have slayed the other avatars, but not Kaliya who wasn't slayed, he was converted to a devotee. Krishna himself did it. Hmm? 
And he did a Rasa dance preview of his ability to, as, a, as a Natabara, the best of dancers hmm, on the heads of Kaliya hmm, to let the Gopis know hmm, that he was such. So it's based on this, they're able to say, Natabara Bapu, he, his form is that of the best of dancers. Hmm? But the best of dancers means also that Narayan is not a dancer. He's not known for dancing. As I said, the more the Sarup Shakti is present in, in, in relation to Bhagavan, the more he's moving. If we move from Golok to Mahavishnu, well, the latter is snoozing most of the time, hmm? dreaming about it. We're part of his dream. Hmm? He's not a dancer, Mahavishnu. If we move on the spectrum further, it becomes a little more lively in Vaikuntha. There's the more interaction, Leela and so forth. But what are the Leelas of Narayan in Vaikuntha? Hmm? He, Leela, he had Leela avatars in this world. He does something here and there, slay a demon, established arm. But when we, but when we go to Goloka, then there's Leela Madhurya. Hmm? Narayan has one Lakshmi. He has a particularly uh, a nice relationship with him, with her, excuse me. The perfect example of a married couple, how they should be, not from a lady's point of view. Hmm? <laughs> no, they're attracted, as Lakshmi was, to Krishna and the way he acted in relation to the gopis, where they got the upper hand on him. Hmm? She's tired of being the just being the second to Narayan. So there's something in the lady, in the ladies that Krishna brings out the possibility of. You have a certain freedom in relation to him. Lakshmi wanted that freedom. Therefore, she, she tried to enter into the rasa dance. In Bhaikuntha, Krishna has one, Nara, one Lakshmi, but in Golok, Lakshmi Sahasrasata Sambhama Zevimanam. Not only had many, many Lakshmis, Lakshmi Sahasrasata, thousands of them. But some Brahma Sevya Manu, they have a different disposition also than Lakshmi. Hmm? It allows them to, it enables them to affect their husband, uh, their lover in, an, in, in such a way that makes him dance. He's dancing under their influence, moving, hmm? trying, to, trying, to, trying to understand their love that's making him the way he is. Hmm? So, this is being said here. Naravatu Bapu. Bara also means bridegroom is one of the meanings. Hmm? So he's the dancing bridegroom, the very form of the dancing bridegroom. Not like Narayan. Hmm? Very still in comparison. Hmm? And not under the control of Lakshmi. That would be a big problem in Vaikuntha. Hmm? If Narayan was, was seen to be henpecked. But Lakshmi sees in Golok, he, he, he like that. He, he, he's he's, he's uh, dear Lalita. Hmm? He comes under the control of his lover. Hmm? Very attractive. Hmm? This is what it means here. Nakabaro hmm? Bapu, hmm? Sukadev says. There he was. Hmm? The Naravatu Bapu, the best of uh, dancing uh, bridegrooms. And the implication of Naravata Vapu is also that uh, is that he whose body makes one dance, he's dancing, he makes others dance in the exaltation of bliss. Grammatically speaking, we can draw this from the, from the text. Hmm? Naravata Vapu Barapida, and he's bedecked with the, the crown of the peacock's tail feather. Hmm? Um, these go together. Naravata Bapu, Jibu Goswami also, he cites a verse, I think 3, uh, 2, 12 of the Bhagavatam, where Krishna describes that he himself is attracted to his own form, what to speak of Narayan. This is Naravata Bapu, and be decked with a peacock feather. Brahma, in his prayers, in his eulogy of Krishna after the Brahma Mohan Leela, makes the point yes, you have a dark complexion, but just to, and so on, but that people may not confuse 
suffer from the same confusion that I did, that I thought at some point, at the beginning of my initiation, at the dawn of creation, that you, Krishna, were a manifestation of Narayan. Because Narayan appeared before him, then showed himself as Krishna and gave him mantra and disappeared. So it looked like, oh, Krishna is a manifestation of Narayan. Hmm. But Brahma was blessed by Krishna in Gopavesh, as described in Gopal Tapani, with some scars for bhakti, some scar of the of the of a, of a friendly nature, with a for, as the verse says, for sakirasa. Hmm? And you can't have that in Vaikuntha. Hmm? So of course he went back, as we described in the way to Saptami, to, to his abode. He worshipped Narayan, who's the deity there. But it wasn't until Krishna brought him to Bukolok to, to, to Gokul hmm, to experience the Brahma Vimohan Lila and understand in the context of his bewilderment the position of Krishna as the source of Narayan. So in his prayers, his eulogy that follows his epiphany, he wants to distinguish Krishna from Narayan when he begins to describe him as having a dark complexion like, like the cloud decorated with a golden lightning-like dress. This could mean Narayan. No, but he has a flute. He wears a peacock for his feather for his crown. He's different in this way. Hmm? The peacock feather, of course, from Brahma's point of view, speaks of, well, it has eyes and it's very beautiful. Hmm? So he wears a crown like this, which, which Im implies that he eyes are imply knowing, seeing. Hmm? That he has a knowing that but peacock's eyes don't actually see. So he has eyes that are blind of knowledge. And his knowledge, which he has, Krishna, unlimitedly, is nonetheless blinded by the beauty of the peacock's feather, which represents love, knowledge and love. His knowledge is blinded by the love hmm, that doesn't allow him to find the fault in anyone, hmm, to overlook it, to bless Putana with the palm of Vatsalya Bhava, and despite her, her um, evil intentions, the evil intentions behind her approach. Mm -hmm. And of course, when it, when it comes to the, the romanticism of Krishna, the peacock feather means, of course, peacock has many eyes, so looking everywhere in all directions, Krishna's looking everywhere for Radha. Mm -hmm. So, Varapida, not the Varapapu. And what else does the verse say? Uh, he says, the crown of the peacock and karnayo uh, karnikaram. He has a, it says, he wears flowers over his ears. Karnikaram, the commentators have referred to it as a, as a type of yellow lotus. It's a very bewildering term, karnikaram, used in different ways. It could refer to different flowers and uh, and into the center of a lotus, but they specifically say repeatedly Sanatana and Jiva Goswami was yellow in nature. And the plural is used, but uh, Krishna is not wearing two of them, but he has two ears hmm, and one flower and he's moving it in youthful intoxication from one ear to the next, showing himself off like this. Just see. Hmm? How beautiful I am. And of course, he's beautifying the flower itself. So, Karnayo, Karnikaram. This is the play. It implies the play of his youthful intoxication. And the text says what? Kanaka Kapisham Vasa. Vasa, his dress was Kanaka uh, Kapisham. Uh, it was like a dark gold, that dark yellow that resembled the, the brilliance of gold. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And Vijayantam Malam. Vijayantam is a garland. The Bija Malam is a garland. Vijayanti garland is a, is a famous garland of Vaikuntha that Narayan wears. Mm -hmm. The victory garland, mm -hmm. it's called. So Krishna wears this, and there in Braj, it's made up of five different kinds of forest flowers. He's famous for wearing this, this garland. So this is the description. Varapita. Mm -hmm. Uh, Narabhata Vapu, hmm? uh, 
or apidam, narabato, vapu. Kanayo, kanikaram, kanaka kapisambasa, and then what? Decorated in this way, Srivasa's verse from the Bhagavad says, his beauty, Krishna's beauty, was broadcast, Gita Kirti, his Kirti, his fame, Gita, was sung about by Gopa Vrindai, by the group of Gopas. Now, here Balaram in this verse is appears to be conspicuous by his absence, but he's actually present in a significant way. One of the way, of course, previous to this verse in Gopi Gita, Balaram is mentioned, and afterwards he's also mentioned. The Gopis are singing about the influence of Krishna's flute, and they're speaking about the vision, the perfection of vision, being seeing him entering in the forest with his friends, Baladev is, is, is along with him, and so forth. Um, but here the verse, uh, just by the words um, Gita Kirti, singing his fame, the whole range of Sakiras is mentioned, and the particular role of Balaram as Nityananda Prabhu in, in this Leela, which he's now just entering into, is also uh, brought out. So you see the wisdom of Shiva's Pandit, Sri Manumangalji, Kijai. Hmm? He says that, uh, well, the coward boys are singing the, about the glories of Krishna. They're chanting about his, his, uh, his, his exploits and so forth. And if the coward boys are doing it, the implication is that, of course, Balaram's also there. But he's there not in the way in which he is present in Sakyarasa in a prominent way, well, along with Krishna, the two twins as the, as the Yugal Kishore, the object of love. Hmm? He has his role, and it's a significant one, from the Madhurya Rasa perspective, where he serves as an assistant to the romantic leelas of Krishna. For the most part, of course, indirectly, by getting out of the way that it might happen. You might know that Balaram, of course, tells on Krishna when Krishna does things that he shouldn't do, like eating dirt. But significantly, he knows about Krishna's romantic leelas, but he doesn't tell on him. He allows it to happen. Hmm? He, he allows it. If he would tell on it, oh, the whole thing would be, oh, it would be problematic. He, he allows it to happen. Typically, of course, Balaram is, is his emotional uh, trans psychological uh, composition is, uh, is that of, of Sakya with a combination of Dasya and Vatsalya. And they play themselves out in, individually in different leelas. Hmm? He doesn't have the romantic composition to his trans psychological makeup like an Armasaka would. But there is, of course, one instance in which Balaram is directly involved in pacifying the gopis with regard to the way in which Krishna acts in relation to them. In this case, leaving Vrindavan altogether. Balaram is sent back by Krishna to minister to them and other uh, Braj associates about his absence, about his will to return, and why he couldn't come just now, but that he would, would and, and so on and so forth. Now, there's differing opinions about this, and they're both um, viable. The more prominent one being that relative to Balaram's Vatsalya sensibilities, he ministers to Krishna's gopis in this instance um, on his return to Vrindavan and uh, pacifies them in a way that is um, possible for one in Matsali Ras who's touched by a particle of Madhurya. This is called Anumodana hmm? in Priti Sandarbha. Tadbhava, the extreme sense of this Anumodana Bhava or Tadbhava is found in the Manjaris. They're, they are in Manjari, they're in Madhurya Bhav, but they're in a Madhurya Bhav that is, it, it is centered around experiencing and assisting the bhav of Radha rather than a type of Madhurya Ras where they're having a direct romantic relationship with Krishna. Tad bhav, tad bhav anumodana, uh, same thing. So a touch of this type of bhav can come in Vatsalya Rasa. You can't have some Vatsalya Rasa mixed with Madhurya Rasa where the adult 
teacher, the parent wants to have a romantic relationship with the child or the, or, or the student underage, that's, that's inappropriate. But a touch of it can come in terms of this type of Madhurya Bhav, where there's a sympathy for hmm, the Bhagavan Sri Krishna in this case, his, his romantic sensibilities. Jiva Goswami gives the example of the, of the elders in, in Vaidarbya, the kingdom where Rukmini comes from, during the marriage of Krishna and Rukmini, they had they exhibited a touch of this. They were sympathetic to this. They were supportive of this. Hmm? We find this in its extreme, in, just very partially here in the case of Batsalya Rasa that I'm citing, in its extreme form in the Manjari Bhav, and in a very prominent way, of course, in the Narmasakas of Krishna, who are also indicated in this verse with the words Gita Kirti, as I'll explain. But relative to the point at the moment, some commentators see Balaram with a touch of Tadana relative to his parental sensibilities when he ministers to the gopis. But in Preeti Sandarbha, Jiva Goswami makes him, takes him to new heights hmm? and, 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 and depicts him as experiencing a, 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 the, a, the Narma Sakabhav hmm? at the time that he is ministering to the gopis about Krishna's separation in ways that during the Braj Lila, Subala would do, for example, Ujjwala would do, and so forth. This is possible for Balaram. Anything's possible for Balaram with regard to aesthetic sensibilities. Mm -hmm. But uh, even that, of course, is an indirect, it's fairly direct, but still indirect in, in the sense of being an assisting role that Balaram plays or Sakiras plays in relation to Madhurya Rasa. These two, of course, are, are very close friends, aesthetically speaking, Sakya and Madhurya Rasa. And it comes out more fully in the life, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the play of the, of, of the Narma Sakas. But the point here, before going into that, life of the Narma Sakas, referred to here also, is that Balaram's role here in, as Nityananda Prabhu in Gorlila will be to further assist Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his dispensation of the, of the opportunity for Gopi Bhav. So this, this anarpita charim charat kurnayabhatina kalo samarpaitam unato ujvala rasam sabhakti sriyam unato ujvala, not just ujvala rasa, but unato ujvala rasa. This means manjari bhav hmm, is that bhav by which, through which we can come closest to what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself has is, is come to experience, the Baba of Radha. And he is making that available to people. And no one is doing more to make that available than Nityananda Prabhu. They have a significant role. Advaita brought him here, pretty significant, hmm? as the Leela Avatar. Gadadhar made it possible for him to actually enter into Radha Bhav. He, what could be more glorious? Nityananda Prabhu, his greatness is that the, the, the dispensation that, that, is, that is available through Mahaprabhu, he wanted to herald it everywhere. So therefore, for example, Vrindavan Das in Sakyaras says, Nityananda Prabhu brought, brought Gopi Bhav to the world. He's giving Gopi Bhav to the world by giving Mahaprabhu to the world. Hmm? While Mahaprabhu was still at this point teaching, worship Krishna, chant Krishna Nam, they're all doing that and thinking maybe he is Krishna. I don't know if we should say that. Is that possible? Nityananda Prabhu said, yeah, it's possible. Chant Gaur Nam. Give the teachings of Gaur. Worship Gaur. Hmm? So <laughs> Nityananda Prabhu is, is, he's, you can imagine in, 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 in the Braja Leela, he can't directly participate in the, in, 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 in the Gopis Leela directly as Balaram. Hmm? He can indirectly as Balaram do so. But in Gorla, he can more directly participate, not by tasting Madhuri Leela, but by actively promoting it. He can't actively promote it in Christian Leela. He has to not promote it so that it can go on. Now he gets a chance to sing about it, to glorify it, to spread it everywhere. Hmm? So he has an assisting role. So the point here is that in the verses that Balaram is present in the covert way means he's present as Nityananda Prabhu in the, in the mind of Srivastaka as he's chanting it. 
at, in an assisting role, not so much as along with Krishna as the object of love in Sakyarasa. That's also there. But his main role is for the distribution. And as a byproduct of that, some people like him very much. They become very attached to him. And so they get his bhava as well. Hmm? Very nice. Very perfect. Hmm? And it plays such an important role. What? And we can see that from who else but Shivastakur himself. Look at it. Hmm? He says, the verse says, Gita Kirti. It means also not only are the cowherd boys singing about the glories of Krishna, but some of them are singing about the glories of the gopis based on the perception of the bhava of Krishna in relation to them. Hmm? So the whole range of the sake bhav is found in these in these two words, gita uh, kirti. Uh, the some cowboys are singing the, the glories of Krishna, and some are known hmm, to sing about the glories of the gopis, and they're the best singers for Krishna, hmm, to Krishna. And sometimes, in ways that other cowboys don't quite understand exactly what what they're singing about, but they they understand a special bhava inside of Krishna, his romanticism. And they want to participate in that. Hmm? And Sri Vastaku, he's that kind of Gopa. Hmm? After all, from where this whole Unatodra Rasa is being disseminated, where does it start? In Sri Vastaku's house. Hmm? Shri, in Madhu Mangal, in his heart, he is a Gopi, a Gopa, no doubt. But he also has. Shivasa. His heart is also the residence of Radha because he's a kinkar, like Subal of Radha. They have friend relationship with Krishna hmm? and a servant relationship with Radha. Hmm? And so his courtyard, hmm? this is the manifestation of his heart. Hmm? So um, here, Anarmasaka is making his heart available in the form of a kirtan and a new lila from which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will be, will, will, will inaugurate and begin to spread his Sankirtan and where in, hmm, in the Nitya Leela, it is taking place every night, hmm? every night. Hmm. So here he says that Balaram is also present and he will be present more in Gaur Leela, not in terms of spreading Sakyarasa, that will happen and it does widely, hmm? Because he's an extraordinary person and some people become attached to him. He came with his associates for that matter as well. They began the initiation of giving diction to Sampradaya and Sakiras and so forth and so on. It has a prominent role, but it's a beautiful assisting role. So what will be, he will be present in this Leela more as an assistant in terms of broadcasting the possibility of Madhuya Rasa, so central. To go to Vaishnavism. And then, of course, the verse goes on to say beautifully that what? Let me see here. Um, that in this way, uh, the gopis, the gopas sang about him, and some sang about Radha and so forth, as I mentioned. This is a mention of the Priyanarma Sakas. And this way, he thrilled the forest of Vrindavan, Sapala Ramanam, Vrindaranyam, Pravishad. So he by his swapadam, by his footprints, hmm? Ramanam. Hmm? He gave pleasure to the residents of the forest, Brindaranyam, the forest of Brinda, hmm? by, 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 by entering into it. Here, the implication is that, of course, his footprints are very special and they are one of the qualities of Krishna that serve as an Udipana for Sakirasa. The reason for this, of course, is that, is that by the time of his Poganda Leela, which is central to the cowherding Leelas and his, 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 his fraternal love, prior to that, in Kumar, his love gravitates towards his parents. When he reaches five or six, then his love gravitates towards his friends. And you can all remember back, who are your friends from childhood? You won't remember friends at three years old or four years old. Maybe at five and six, you start to remember, yeah, I started to go to school and in kindergarten and I met a friend there and uh, he was like this. And so, so as you enter, begin to enter the Poganda, then the, the gravity of your, your love center moves from Vatsalia, your parents, 
to friends and friends become and parents become a little bit of an enemy to that a little bit of a uh, uh, <laughs> an opposition to that what, who are your friends what kind of friends are you keeping <laughs> Krishna had very nice friends of course but <laughs> but they were mischievous nonetheless concerned for Yasoda so at any rate the point is here that when he reaches Poganda, he he's also increasing his in his bodily um, weight, and so that's one thing. He may sometimes run barefoot in the village, but he's too as a, as a Kumar. But he's too doesn't weigh enough for his footprints to leave much of a mark unless he steps in butter. Hmm. <laughs> then he can see his footprint to some extent, but otherwise. Yashoda is giving him shoes to wear. Therefore, when he starts to go out and Pogona Lila the herd cow, she brings the shoes. She says, you have to wear shoes. But he said, no, and cow herding cows don't wear shoes. And we have to be like those whom we herd so that we know what they want. We have to enter into how they feel to be their leaders. So we're not wearing shoes. Hmm? And thus, in the Sakiras Lila, his footprints are everywhere throughout the forest. Hmm? And the coward boys are very familiar with them. And by the arrangement of Brinda, which is relevant, which is being brought out by these words here, is that the footprints, despite natural elements, despite thousands of cows tramp, trampling and so forth, the footprints somehow remain untouched. Hmm? They're preserved. Hmm? They make a deep impression on the coward boys. The only time they disappear is when by Brinda, 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 Brinda Devi's arrangement, it's suitable for Krishna's romanticism. You can't have his tracks heading towards Chandavali's location. Hmm? Otherwise, his, his reasoning and excuse that he, he never really went there, his, his lying about that, will be, he'll be caught, he'll be found out. So that time then by Vrinda's arrangement, who's in charge of the whole of the forest, hmm? uh, erases them. Hmm? So these footprints, anyway, they're very, very significant, especially there, as I say, there in Adipana for the for, for Sakirasa, brought up by Rupa Goswami. And, um, and, and both, they're both giving pleasure to the Vrindavan forest, hmm? and the Vrindavan forest is giving great pleasure to Krishna. Both things are implied here in the word, word Svapadam Ramanam, Vrindavan, Vrindaranyam Prabhishad. Hmm? In other words, the forest makes itself suitable for Krishna to walk upon it, a concern for Mother Yasoda. How are you not going to wear shoes? You're going to walk in the forest. Try it. You know. Well, this is a very special forest. So it makes it's, it's the stones melt, the leaves, the flowers exude pollen that falls down and makes like a carpet. Like sometimes in Madhavan, some of you have been in Madhavan, Costa Rica. The, 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 those trees, they, they, they shed those yellow flowers and it becomes a carpet on the path. Hmm? It's oh, so, so beautiful. Hmm? So like this, the forest is making all arrangements as the cows are too, leading the, as they go ahead of Krishna in conjunction with the, with, the, with the forest, making the ground soft and suitable for Krishna to walk upon with his tender lotus feet and leave impressions. Interestingly enough, impressions on the bottom of his feet are also found the exact same impressions on the feet of Balaram. This is this is going towards Sakya Ras now. The two are one. <laughs> that, that's a nice point brought out in the Krishna Sandarbha. So going forward, what the verse says, and I guess we come to a conclusion on the verse here uh, that um, and um, oh well, the implication also I should say of this is that in relation to the first words of the verse, where he's not the Varavapu, the best of dancers and so forth. Um, means that, well, he's an avatar, it would appear, okay. And all the avatars, when they leave this world, where do they go? Well, they go back into Narayan and Vaikuntha. But this guy has no place in Vaikuntha, a dancer like this, as we said earlier. Hmm? There's no, this is not a, so it implies, there, the very words Natavaravapu imply that there is a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, an abode that corresponds with this best, of, of bridegrooms, the best of, of the very form of the best of, of dancers. There has to be a place that corresponds with him. Hmm? That is here mentioned at, at the end of the verse. He's entering into the Vrindavan. There he stays forever in the Mahabhaikuntha. There he can be found. And that is the place that Tad Anantangsa Sobhavam is manifest by Balram. 
he manifests that place directly hmm? for the for the pleasure of Krishna. The very form, the Narabhata Bapu of Krishna, is coming from the Sandini Shakti that Balaram presides over. Then it says here what? Vibradvenu Landran. Hmm? That he filled the holes of his flute with his breath that made the sound of the mantras that bewildered the gopis and gopas, inviting everyone to, to join him. Hmm? Gopis sometimes criticize Krishna's flute. They call it just a bamboo reed and has holes in it for that matter. So Krishna filled the holes <laughs> with his breath and the sounds. Uh, somehow he could, he could vibrate through musical vibrations in consideration of, of rag, tal, gaon, murchana, and so forth in, in classical Indian in music, in such a way that the sounds represented the feeling and the implications of the mantras that corresponded with them. Hmm? To hear the fluid of Krishna, this is, I mean, it, the Malara rag is very famous, of course. That, that's a rag that if you play it right, you can make it rain. Hmm? Make it rain. Hmm? What is that song? Make it, let it rain. Uh, um, shower the people you love with love. Hmm. It's a nice song. So when Krishna plays that Mala Raga, of course, everything begins to melt. Hmm? Tears from the eyes, hearts melt. Their hearts can actually melt. Here only metaphorically they can melt. There, they're not made of a physical substance. They can actually melt. Hmm? They're made of an emotional substance constituted of the Surup Shakti. Hearts can literally melt. Hmm? Krishna's perspiration is the, is the Jamuna. That's why she's dark. Hmm? Oh, so many ways to talk about this. Poetry is the best genre uh, in, in language to use because in poetry, things can be bigger than life. Hmm? They can be more like the possibilities that lie in the prospect of the Atma. So in this way, Sri Vastaku Kant's a very beautiful uh, verse at the, hest, at the behest of, 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 of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, saying, saying an appropriate verse, just see the wisdom of Madhu Mangal in the form of Sri Vastaku, and how he is speaking about, in some, some respects, as I pointed out, the role of Nityananda Prabhu now, as he appears, he's Balaram appearing in Gaur Lila. And at that time, of course, then, um, I'll try to conclude here because we're going a little over time. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took uh, Nityananda Prabhu on his lap and held him hmm, in the reversal of roles, hmm, which would be uh, re which is relevant to Gaur Lila. It was typically Krishna as Vishnu resides on the lap of Ananta, of Balaram. Hmm? Balaram is the assistant. But Balaram is so intoxicated with the opportunity that he has in Gaur Lila to participate directly by way of dissemination and preaching about Madhuri Lila. That's giving him a thrill. Hmm? He has to be quiet, mum, in Gaur Lila. Hmm? Uh, that, 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 that he's, that he's, out of, he's, he's like unorthodox, does it say, in his behavior. He's an abadut. Um, he's misunderstood. Hmm? So Krishna, has, Ch Krishna Chaitanya has to repeatedly make him make him understood that he's a special person, a special person who should be venerated, and so, without whom his Gaur Lila would not be complete. So he, anyway, he takes, in this instance, Nityananda Ram on his lap, and the devotees, they just hear the verse of Shiva Stab and they get it. <laughs> How deep is the Bhagavatam? They get it. And then they see here, for a moment anyway, Nityananda has come, and he's sitting on, on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lap, Mm -hmm. This is a, this is another, and we're in this leela. How will it unfold? What 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 will what will transpire next? Uh, it's it's never a dull moment. Mm -hmm. So, Sri Nitendram ki jai, Sri Baspandit ki jai, Gaur leela ki jai, Braj leela ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Sri Nitendra Trayodasi Mahamotsamat iti ki jai, Gaur Premanande Hari Hari. I don't want to take longer, and you might have a, give a little time if there's any questions.
Yes. <laughs> Why are the Krishna Balarama Walters? Why do they have shoes when there's no shoes in the Leela? That is the question. <laughs> they're, they're there because they're, Mishoda is offering them. They don't have to take them. And they may wear them around the house. That's possible in the village itself, but not in that, not once they go cowherding. So they're there as, a, as, as, as an offering. Should you like to wear them? Not when cowherding, that's true. So if you want to just go into that window and you don't have to put the shoes on. What else? Yes. Guruvakya. Guruvakya, can you hear me? When 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 the Spanish devotees speak, do you hear their questions? Do you, do you hear the English of Padmanabh? So the question was that um, if I could clarify further what I was speaking about, about Rukmini and, uh, and uh, the, the elders there and Vatsalya Bhav tasting some measure of Madhurya. The, the point I'm making is that there, I'll break it down and try to make it simple for you. There are two basic types of Madhurya Rasa. One is called Sambhog, one is called Tadbhav. So Sambhog means for the pleasure of Krishna, selflessly, a gopi, gives herself to him in romantic uh, life. Hmm? As uh, Radha does, for example, hmm? uh, as Chandrabali does. The other type of uh, Madhuri Rasa is, is, is Tadbhav, Tad Anamodana, same thing. Anamodana means sympathetic. So it, it means those who are sympathetic to the romanticism of Krishna and his lover. Hmm? So they they uh, participate in Madhurya Rasa by way of their sympathy and empathy for, the, uh, for Krishna and his lover and assist uh, the lover, Radha, in her pursuit of union with Krishna. That's called Tadbhav or Tadanamodana. And in Gaudi Sampradaya, Rupa Goswami says that is preferable because there's no way that you could have a direct relationship with Krishna in some bhoga that would give you as much, bring you as close to the full experience of Krishna and romanticism that Radha alone has, hmm? uh, which you access through Tadbhav. I mean, does to Tadbhav, you get closer to Radha's full, full measure of Radha's experience than any other gopi experiences directly in relation to Radha. Hmm? That's the math of it, if you will. So the virtues of uh, Tad Anubhav, this type of Madhurya Rasa. Now, when, when the Dharma Sakas, Bhav is mixed with Madhurya Rasa, it's mixed with this type. They don't want to have a loving, romantic relationship with Krishna. But they see that Krishna has a loving relationship with the gopis and as his friends, they want to participate in that, assist him in that. And so they become associated with the gopis for the purpose of getting experience of Madhurya Rasa and, and be able to participate in an empathetic and sympathetic way. Hmm? So now the difference between the Narmasakas and the 
Manjaris in this regard, they're both experiencing Tad Anubhav, but there's two types of Tad Anubhav, that is Sakshat, direct and partial. Hmm? So because the Manjaris are in Madhurya Rasa, they are in direct Tadbhav, Tadanamodhubhav. But the Narmasakas are in Sakyabhav, so theirs is partial. Hmm? Partial. So they, they from, from the vantage point of Sakya Rasa, they have a, a particle of Madhurya Rasa, Jiva Goswami says, hmm? in, the, in the mix of their love that enables them to be to understand the feelings of Krishna's separation and, and feelingly participate, be able to tell Krishna what he needs to hear or, or, or to assist Radha and so forth in, in, the, in times of desperation. Godopakari hmm? Pritida, yeah. as I like to say. So uh, very special um, time. Now, another example of that indirect Tad Anamodan Bhav is cited by Rupa Goswami in Prita Sandarbha when he cites that in Vidharva, the elders there, they were sympathetic or empathetic with the idea of Krishna marrying Rukmini, even though it was a Gandharva marriage. You have to know that you should know that, of course, you do know that Krishna was, Rukmini was engaged to be married to that other character, Sisupal. And the arrangement was going on, but she sent the message through a Brahmin asking Krishna to kidnap her. So that's called a Gandharva marriage. Mahabharata says in Kali Yuga, only the Gandharva marriage is feasible. So we're okay. It's the kind of marriage that's based on infatuation, nothing else. <laughs> so you're all, you married couples, you've all had your Gandharva marriage, everything's in place. Don't worry about the Vedic samskar there. So, <laughs> Uh, some of you had two of them, so, so <laughs> that's not the best, but uh, infatuation has its place to a point. But anyway, uh, so, so Krishna came, swooped in, he kidnapped Rukmini, and the elders who might have objected to that, what's this? Krishna's coming, and she was betrothed to marry. They were sympathetic to the idea, so they had a touch of this Anumodam Bhav in their parental love. Mm -hmm. It's different than having a touch of romantic love. Elders don't have, if they and if elders have romantic love for their children, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So they have the touch of this type of Madhurya Ras, just a tiny touch, much less than we find in the in the in the in the in the, in the Narma Sakas mm -hmm. and what speak of in, in, in the in the Manjars, but a touch of it. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that you know, one way of looking at as I was explaining it, a Balaram's ministering to the gopis and showing sympathy to them uh, on behalf of Krishna in terms of their feelings of separation from him and so forth when he was sent back to Vrindavan, it could be looked at as, at, 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 as, as this. His Vatsalya praying uh, emotion is prominent. And there's a touch in this instance of Tad Anubhav Madhuri or it could be looked at um, in a similar way, but uh, um, framing that instance as Balaram stepping into Narmasakubhav for a moment, which is out of character, but for Balaram, nothing's out of character, anything's possible. So I hope that helps. It is a complicated theological point, but interesting, mm -hmm. worth, worth, worth discussing. Hope that clarifies. Anything else? Any other questions? Anything from Europe there? There is a question in the chat. I don't know if you have it in your chat, but um, uh, um, Jai Bhakti Goswamini, do you have that? He might have posted it before you came on. So, um, can you expand on the pastime of Lord Garanga's Kirtan and Panihati and the uprooting of the trees? Lord Nityananda was with him, Who's right? Who's asking? Um, Jai Bhakti Goswamini. Can you hear me? Because I can't understand. You can't understand me. You can't hear me. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can't hear Archie City. I heard there's something wrong with the connection. Voice is like stretched out. Well, you can, yeah. The question is about the Panihati Leela, those of you in Europe who aren't hearing Maharaj. And apparently in the Panihati Leela, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, Nityananda Prabhu performed a kirtan and there was, it resulted in the uprooting of some trees. So she's asking, about the uprooting of the trees and how to, what was that, to show the power of bhakti to liberate the trees or was there something else hidden there? That's the question. Well, I can tell you this, that um, I'm not familiar with that Panihati Leela, but I've been to Panihati. And I'll tell you about that for a moment because it was a very special time for me. Prabhupada went by car to Panihati from Vrindavan, or excuse me, from Navadvi, from Mayapur. He'd been invited there to preside over um, a ritual, and there was some prospect that the residents there would, were going to give the property to Iskon for Iskon to manage and, and staff and so forth. So he went with Prabhupada in the car. I was fortunate to go with him. And um, it was a very nice rural setting, of course, and what was very prominent for me was that at a certain point, Prabhupada got up to attend to that which was he invited to do, and I was behind him, and he fell. He was so weak. He fell, and I was able to grab him from underneath his arms and hold him up at that time. So that was a great fortune for me. Uh, but again, I'm not familiar with the Leela of Panihati in which trees were uprooted. I'm not sure where it's related. It's not in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I don't remember it being in the Chaitanya Bhagavat, but it's possible. But um, certainly if uh, they were up, up, uprooted in the context of Kirtan, yes, that would be one way of thinking about that. that the power of bhakti to liberate the trees was... Uh, Manifested, which is you know is, is a point worth underscoring, uh, because by gyan by yoga, well you can't really affect trees and and animals and and uh, nature and so forth. But by bhakti, it's possible. Not only human society can participate, but indirectly, as a result of humans participating, nature can also participate. Animals can take prasadam and they can hear the kirtan, and so on and so forth. So, bhakti devi ki jai. Okay, I think that's good. If there's any other pressing question, we'll take it. Otherwise, we've had a nice discussion and uh, it's all mostly due to your interest, level of your interest. So many of you coming together today, I appreciate the opportunity to meet with you like this and look forward to our next meeting. I guess we'll have again a meeting on Sunday morning for questions. We take questions every Sunday morning at 8.30 Pacific Standard Time in the United States on the same channel, isn't it? Yes. Same link. So. Well, thank you so much. That was a very inspirational talk and uh, very powerful. Thank you. Hey, Krishna. Jai Ram, Jai Krishna. And yeah. Bodhi, stay on for one second. I have an announcement to make. Haribo. Haribo. So for all of you that may have some interest in hearing another class today, um, Padmanabha Swami will be giving um, class tonight at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, and 